Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Na Ajeli and today we're going to have a frequently asked questions segment. I'll be doing these on a regular basis so if you have any frequently asked questions about herbalism please feel free to put them in the comments box and then I will collate them together and in the next time I'm doing the frequently asked segment I'll add those questions in and answer them to the best of my ability. Now let's get into it. The first question, what is a herbalist? Now a herbalist is someone that uses plants or preparations made primarily from plants to create something that promotes healing or supports well-being. And I like to add the supports well-being is because herbalists are not only useful for when you're sick. So we will create things like tinctures, which is herbs and alcohol. We might give you teas, we might make creams, we might make glycerides. There's so many different preparations that we can make for plants to help you on your journey to healing or wellness. Now, the second question is, are plants, herbs safe? Now, I can't give you a yes or no answer because the safety of these herbs is dependent on so many different factors. So many of us know that there are some herbs that can kill and are poisonous. And then there's other herbs that provided in the wrong dose is deadly or can negatively affect or cause serious damage in your body. We have a group of those herbs that are governed in Schedule 20. Um, and the section that we use as herbalists requires us to use these herbs at a particular dosage and in a particular way. Then you have herbs that interact with other medicines. So if you're taking a prescription medicine for something very serious, some of these herbs can interact with them and cause problems or clear them out of your clear the medicine out of your system before it's had the chance to be able to work effectively. So we really have to be careful about the herbs and medicines we use. And this is some of the things that we learn as herbalists when we're studying. Another thing to consider is, again, herbs used in the wrong dose can damage organs. So one of the questions is, can herbs damage the kidney? Yes, if you're using the wrong kind of herbs in the wrong dose, it can damage your kidneys. So in answer to your question at whether plants or herbs are safe, firstly, there's always going to be a risk. But the risk will be reduced when you're engaging with someone who has the knowledge and the expertise and is following the regulation to a T and is not being reckless in their application of herbal medicine. Now, if you're dealing with someone who hasn't got the knowledge or hasn't got the expertise and isn't following the regulation and is, doesn't even know how to recognize half the plants they're using, then the risk is going to be significantly higher. Plants are very powerful and we do not use them anyhow. Another question is, can herbs affect pregnancy? I guess it's linked to the uh, above um, question. But yes, they can affect pregnancy. They can also be helpful in pregnancy if you use the right herbs. But there's also herbs that we know can induce abortion. There's herbs that we know can start early labour. So one of the things that I, I will always um, keep in mind, um, and I've done a video about choosing the right course, which can also help you when speaking to a herbalist to know whether they're qualified to actually do what they're supposed to do, is to make sure that you're working with someone that has gone through the, the right education, uh, the right learning, and they will know what to use, what not to use, and when to send you straight to the doctor. So can herbs affect you in pregnancy? They can be helpful and they can be dangerous in the wrong hands. So one question I get is, do herbs cure all disease? And my answer to that is no. Um, and I say that for a number of reasons. Herbs are not a cure-all for every single thing to do with the human body. And one example is if you come into my clinic and I feel like you're about to have a heart attack or you're in a process of having a heart attack, I'm not going to sit here looking in my dispensary trying to get herbs to give you. I will call 999 and I'll be like, this person is having a heart attack. You need to come ASAP. If, for example, your leg is over there and your body is over there, I'm not going to sit there and try and get herbs to put those things together. I'm going to send to you to the hospital. If I think that you have cancer, again, I'm not going to try and treat and cure the cancer. I'm going to say to you, please, oh, this is what I suspect is happening. Please, can you go to the doctors and get that checked and have you sign you off and have them do all the tests. Certain conditions as well, I will ask you to go and get the tests done for the doctors to confirm whether this is indeed the case. If you have a newborn with signs of meningitis, I am not going to sit here and try. I will tell you to go to the doctor. We have something that we call red flags. If we see anything that is a sign of something really serious going on, 
I am not going to treat you. I am going to tell you to go to the doctors and have the doctors have a look at you and treat you and support you in that. There are lots of things that herbal medicine is super effective for, but it's not for everything. And the one of the things about practicing safely as a herbalist is to know where you stop and then you have to refer your, your patient or your client or your customer to somebody else. The next question I get, is herbal medicine effective? And the answer to that is yes. I wouldn't have spent years investing in learning this subject if I didn't feel that herbal medicine is effective. And um, we also have to understand that some of these medications that we've grown to respect have been birthed as a result of the effectiveness of herbal medicine. They've looked into the constituents of these plants, why it's so effective and made their version and created some of the tablets that we have we are in the West seem to respect a lot more. And also the majority of the world are still using herbal medicine as their primary source of medicine. Is the whole world wrong? So in answer to the question, yes it is. Another thing is, are herbalists self-employed? Um, yes, the majority of us are, but other herbalists can also be employed in particular organisations. They can be employed by hospitals, they could be employed by um, businesses to practice their herbalism. So. Not all of them are self-employed. In my case, I am. I'm not employed by any organisation or business, but um, herbalists are, can be self-employed or employed. Another question I get is, what do herbalists do? Um, now, most people see them as, OK, I see a person, I have a conversation with them. And once I have a conversation, I'll make a herbal preparation and I give it to them. Yeah, herbalists do that. But herbalists can also be growers. So they can be supplying the herbs that, you know, a lot of herbalists are using. They could be growing those herbs and making sure that they're effective and making sure that the medicinal properties are coming out in those plants. Herbalists do that. Herbalists write books and give lectures. Herbalists also conduct research in terms of the effectiveness of, of herbal medicine. You know, herbalists work in the community, you know, managing community gardens and working to give more access to the communities. Herbalists do so much. So those are my questions for answered for today. Again, if you've got any more questions that you would like an answer to in regards to the world of herbal medicine, please put them in the chat and I'll try my best to answer them. If I don't know the answer, because I admit I don't know everything, I will do my best to research and speak to the people who would know and come back to you with an answer that will help. I hope you've enjoyed. Please subscribe, like and share my videos and I'll see you next time.